Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're going to the major stories, big in headlines uh, this morning. And we'll say good morning to our analyst this morning, Tunde Kolawole, legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good morning, my brother. Morning to you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Let's kick off with the Punch newspapers this morning and see what we can find uh, over there. The first big one there says a, a daily fuel consumption hits 72.72 million liters. Marketers blame smuggling. Petrol usage jumped from 57.44 million in November to 72.72 uh, million in December. Independent marketers berate security agencies, say four trucks, not um, needle. Um, all right. Um, still on the punch this morning. NIN telcos lose 11.8 million subscribers in four months. Kogi still missing as Nigeria's vaccination rises to 513,626. And also most Nigerian airports not viable, says Senate committee. Presidency tackles Atiku over Nigeria's failed state comment. And also... Resident doctors restate April 1st indefinite strike date. Nine feared killed in Oshun, Benue, and Ambra court clashes. COVID-19 hindering Ajakota technical auditors, says minister. A few others uh, still on the punch. Police partner hunters, in, or rather as three in Oshun, or rather as three abducted in Oshun, 50 million naira demanded. Um, we also have here clerics and 14 others arrested for southeast attacks on police. Those are the big ones on the punch this morning. All right, let's turn now to the Daily Sun. Fuel crisis looms as tanker drivers threaten strike. IYC backs NLC on rejection of price hike. Ask FG to admit failure. Your toothless bulldog, Ipman, tells Labour. Atiko here speaking, why insecurity and unemployment are soaring. Southwest stakeholders oppose life pension for ex-governors and deputies. Hand put hackers refinery to private firms. Peter Side advises government. Uh, we see this one here saying police arrest 16 for killing security operatives raising police stations. Act fast to save Nigeria, Khan tells Buhari. Religious political leaders hastening Nigeria's collapse, says K. Gama. And Ohanese, Southeast governors ready for regional security. Uzodima here saying will support outfits formed and group reaffirms zoning presidential ticket to zone. That's it on the Daily Sun. All right, the Daily Independent coming next. Uh, it says here from a uh, vice president, Atiku seeks help for Buhari government, list ways to address unemployment. An NPC clears hurdles for activities to resume at Osubi Airport. INEC under Yakubu operating like Stone Age days, says uh, Bode George. And uh, we also have here 2023 20, under 35 to get free nomination forms in PDP. Controversy trails release of 22 billion naira bailouts to aviation industry. And uh, odds, um, well, let's just move to this, this one says Abakari in Makodi leads manhunt for autumn's attackers. Those are the stories on the Daily Independent. Let's go now to the uh, Nation newspaper. Tinubu here is saying only unity and peace can make Nigeria great. Atiku here is also saying how to attract capital inflow. Tax court, privatization, key. Former NFF technical director, like Loco, dies at 76. Resident doctors to begin indefinite strike on Thursday. Buhari, Lawan, Bajabiamila, governors, others, extol ex Lagos governor at 69. No fit COVID 19 vaccines here, says government. Navdak warns on fake diabetes cure T. Ban convicted academic from teaching, says Afe Babalola. Stories here on the Nation newspaper. Lastly, NSE goes tough on quoted companies. All right, um, I'm going to start with um, Tundukala Wale. I want you to start with the um, criticism from the presidency towards Atiku Abubakar. Uh, I'm going to read just the t last uh, two parts of the thread that he put on uh, Twitter that is creating this uh, conversation. It says here, this government obviously lacks the capacity to address our current challenges and we must help them, not because of the government, but because of our people. In a situation where we are simultaneously the world headquarters for extreme poverty, 
the world capital for out-of-school children, and the nation with the highest unemployment rate on earth. This is a very real and present danger that we might uh, slip into the failed states index, God forbid. So I want you to start there. Um, your views on uh, Matiku Abubakar's uh, uh, Twitter thread and uh, the things that he has had to say. Well, thanks uh, uh, so much. Uh, if we separate the message from the messenger, we will be able to make a very fair criticism of what is coming from Malaji Atiku Abubaka. Here is a man who, since the last election, has fled the country to reside in Dubai or thereabouts, living in a convert zone, and then recommending palliative and solutions to Nigeria's problem from very far away. He could be described as a man who is staying so many miles away to throw stone at his uh, father's house. But with that as it may, uh, you look critically at that message. Is Atiku really wrong in his assertion? The answer is no. He is quite right. And Nigeria is sitting on the time bomb, time bomb of unemployment, time bomb of rural and urban banditry, time bomb of uh, poor management of resources, time bomb of corruption, and time bomb of um, incompetence from all the different security outfits that we have in the country. When you have all these combinations, you will want to say and agree with a large article of worker that we require to help this government so that all of us will not perish in the Armageddon that might befall us if the government is not assisted to solve the problems. Because if the Nigerian state collapses, it is not just the people in power alone that will suffer. In fact, they might not even suffer because most of them have grass extension. It is the ordinary Nigerian person who cannot flee to Dubai, who cannot go and reside in Dubai like the wife of the president, who are not dual citizens, that will suffer the consequences of the collapse of the Nigerian nation. So to that extent, I agree with him that we require to help this government. In fact, the government is being like a bull in a China wear shop. And the best option we have as patriots, as statesmen, as responsible citizens, is to help to carry arrest and pile all these bulls out of the China where, I mean, out of the China where Trump of Nigeria. So I think Atiku is saying the obvious, whether the propriety of this message is a different thing. That you yourself will flee the country, stay in an organized environment, uh, live in comfort zone, and then begin to recommend. Why does he not come here and stay with us and let us all of us plug it together and find solutions to it together? About yeah, him, him, him being in Nigeria wouldn't change, you know, the details of what he's saying. He's currently not even in government. And so he, you know, can be any, in any part of the, or do you agree, can be in any part of the world and still state his observations. It doesn't, he, he is as good as any other, you know, Nigerian in diaspora as it stands. So don't, don't those Nigerians in diaspora have a right to speak about the uh, things that are currently, the country is currently dealing with? Does he have to be here? And if he is here, what role will he play? Different from... I, I agree with you that with state of technology today, you can be anywhere in the world and still be effective to some extent in the contributions that you want to make with regards to any issues that you are interested in. Furthermore, too, the diaspora community will most likely be able to hook on to a overcast message. And whatever contribution that they may have to make, they could begin to make moves in that direction from some of the messages that is coming from Atikwa Ubaka. But the truth of the matter is, the PDP, which is a political party that Atiku Abubakar belongs to, and Atiku Abubakar 
being the presidential candidate of the PDP in the last election, can be seen as a de facto opposition leader to the present government. And when you are a de facto opposition leader, it is best to stay in the mainstream of things, to offer alternatives to the government in power, to stay away in a combat zone and begin to make recommendations. It's morally wrong. Now let's give you an hypothetical example. In 2023 now, will Atiku Awaka now come back to Nigeria and say he wants to fly the flag of the PDP and other political party to run as president? Who is going to listen to him? He has not been here with us for so many years now. Nowhere the shoe is thinking of. So whatever recommendations he's making, whatever solutions he has to the Nigeria problem, are probably based on news that he has read in the newspaper, seen on television, or watch on the social media. And you and I do know that it is not everything that we read in some of these places that might be correct. He ought to, as a patriot, as a de facto opposition leader, stay on ground to offer effective opposition to this government, not just in, in terms of uh, criticism, oral criticism, writing or making press releases. He ought to be leading demonstrations and rallies like Buhari was doing before he got into government. Because like I do say, the people in power today are impervious to listening to whatever alternative anybody has. It is affirmative action in terms of rallies, demonstrations, and protests that okay. is likely to put them on their toes. Mr. Kolawale, there's, there's yes. another big issue in Nigeria, uh, moving away yes. from security. We see the doctors, yes. the National Association of Resident Doctors in Nigeria, NAD, they embarked yes. on warning strike, and they had a mm. list of demands. You know, they're saying they're being owed salaries, their hazard allowances are not being paid, and, you know, a list of, you know, challenges that they face while they battle coronavirus on the front lines, you know, in Nigeria. And on the Punch newspaper, we see a story this morning saying resident doctors reinstate April 1st indefinite strike date. Did they not give the government enough time, you know, during the warning strike period to bring them to the negotiating table and find a way forward such that this is avoided? Well, uh, honestly speaking, given the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we have in our hands, one could say that this is the most inauspicious time for anybody in the health sector or any health worker to begin to contemplate a strike, talk less of embarking on one. Because the danger of engaging in that kind of a strike could be very, very colossal, not just to the entire Nigerian people, but even to those health workers themselves who are embarking on this strike. So it could be said to be ill-advised at this period in time. But with that as it may, giving government time to address this issue, I don't think so. Too many times, people in authority, they have served the warning notices, which most times they ignore. Look at the NSAF protest. Since 2017, the Nigerian children and have been crying and complaining about the atrocities of the SARS. And we refused the people in authority, the executive arm of government, the judiciary, the security institution themselves, we refused to address those issues until the OT blew out uh, just this last year. So, to that extent, I am not too sure that the government has not, has not already had sufficient notice with regards to what these resident doctors want to do. But again, like I always say, there are certain people in the Nigerian professionals in Nigeria today who you could try as the fat cat of the Nigerian nation. These are the university professors in our school. These are the judiciary, the judges especially in the judicial sector. And then you also have the people in the health sector who have always insisted that they be treated differently from other Nigerian workers who are equally contributing to the Nigerian bread basket. The professors want to be paid differential salaries, the health workers differential salaries, 
and then um, they chose the differential salary. Things like that will usually lead to anarchy. I doesn't solve any problem. I have said it times without number. All these professional bodies, if they put their expertise, if they put their knowledge at the disposal of uh, the Nigerian people and champion cause of good governance in this country, and we now begin to have good people in government, chances are that good people in government will be able to manage the resources of the nation better than it has ever been managed. And then whatever shortcomings there are in all sectors and phases of our life will be better addressed by good government. Right. This episodic thing of different professionals striking for certain things to be done for them differentially or differently is never going to solve the Nigerian problem. In fact, if you compound it, right. it will lead to anarchy. Sooner than later, the traders in Noshodi, in Lagos Island, and then in Ojota and Nora, we also begin to insist on differential prices for their goods and services. All right, so Nicola Wale, um, it, it seems most of the uh, stories, uh, stories we've uh, shared this morning, you know, all still are uh, to demand better governance and better government policies and a better direction for our country. But we thank you for sharing your views with us. Uh, thanks for your time this uh, Monday yes, morning. And we you. wish you a great week ahead. Thanks for having me. It's always been a pleasure chatting with you people. Thank you. Thank you very Bye. much. It's now time for Today in History after the break.